Interested in classic cinema? Wondering about the hidden stories behind a certain actress? Dive into tales that might make you laugh, gasp, or even shed a tear. Share your special memories of encounters with this timeless star. Your stories could be amusing, surprising, or a little sad. Keep an eye out for upcoming revelations about their life and career. Excited to hear your anecdotes. Stay tuned for more intriguing facts about this classic actress. In the realm of classic cinema, one figure stands out for their significant influence on both the screen and the industry itself. This individual brought a unique blend of talent and charisma to their roles, captivating audiences and challenging traditional norms. Their work left a lasting impression on Hollywood, shaping the way characters were portrayed and stories were told. Throughout their career, this figure showcased remarkable versatility, seamlessly transitioning between different genres and roles. Their performances were not just entertaining, but also thought-provoking, adding depth and nuance to the characters they portrayed. By breaking away from stereotypes, they paved the way for a more diverse and dynamic cinematic landscape. Behind the scenes, this individual collaborated with top directors and fellow actors contributing to the evolution of Hollywood's narrative. Their dedication to their craft served as a testament to the ever-changing nature of the film industry, leaving an enduring legacy that continues to inspire new generations of filmmakers and performers. In essence, this influential figure's impact on the world of cinema cannot be overstated. Their work, woven into the fabric of Hollywood, remains a defining chapter in the history of film. At the age of 35, she welcomed her third child, a son named Nicolas Rodriguez, on November 15, 1952. The child's father is her ex-husband, Luis Rodriguez. Following her passing, her remains were cremated and her ashes were scattered off the coast of Baja, California. Lucille Bremer portrayed a princess in Ziegfeld Follies. The gown she wore in this heart of mine, designed by MGM resident designer Helen Rose, is now owned by actress Arlene Fontaine. Lucille Bremer played the role of a princess in the Ziegfeld Follies. In the film, she was part of various musical and comedy numbers alongside notable performers like Fred Astaire, Jimmy Durante, and James Melton. Despite her participation in several sequences, some of her scenes were ultimately cut from the final production. However, her presence in the film, especially in the musical number, There's Beauty Everywhere alongside Fred Astaire and Sid Sherry's left a lasting impression on the audience. Moreover, she made it to the cover of Life magazine on March 25, 1946, further highlighting her prominence in the entertainment industry. Her involvement in the Ziegfeld Follies and recognition by Life magazine underscored her significance in the world of entertainment during that period. In a timeless movie, there was a hidden tension between two famous actresses. One felt overshadowed by the other's fame. But despite this drama backstage, their on-screen chemistry as sisters was praised by many. During a crucial musical scene, a mysterious voice double was used, sparking speculation about why. People loved the story and how the actresses managed to perform so well despite their off-screen issues. The film story, enriched by the conflict, connected with audiences and left a lasting impression. As the credits rolled, it was clear that the movie's brilliance came from the actors' emotions and the way they portrayed their characters. It's a reminder of how powerful storytelling and acting can be. The impact of these actresses and that mysterious musical scene continues to be remembered in film history. In Meet Me in St. Louis, she played Rose Smith. Surprisingly, Mary Astor, who portrayed her mother, was only 11 years older than her. Judy Garland, who played her sister, was 16 years older. Vincent Minnelli, the director, wasn't initially impressed with Garland's performance. He believed Lucille Bremer, despite being new to acting, did a better job because of her dedication. Minnelli urged Garland to deliver her lines with sincerity like Bremer did. At 32, she welcomed her first child, Christina Rodriguez, on September 3, 1949, with her ex-husband, Louis Rodriguez. In the glittering world of Hollywood's golden era, an actress graced the screen with Fred Astaire, showcasing memorable dance routines and earning the favor of MGM studio boss Louis B. Mayer. Despite high expectations, her film career didn't soar as anticipated. One notable appearance was in Meet Me in St. Louis, alongside Judy Garland, marking a significant role. However, a string of unsuccessful projects led her to part ways with the studio. During a recording session on December 13, 1944, Astaire, not just an iconic dancer, but also a talented songwriter, performed a spirited song he had composed for the film, If Swing Goes, I Go Too, sadly left on the cutting room floor. Instead, the romantic ballad This Heart of Mine, featuring Astaire and his on-screen partner, became a standout piece from the movie. 
a stairs recordings with an orchestra directed by Al Sachs surfaced on a French CD box set titled Songs and Pictures 1928-1944, released by EPM Music. At the age of 38, the actress welcomed her fourth child, a son named Tor Richard Rodriguez, on December 14, 1955, with her ex-husband Louis Rodriguez. A captivating journey through the highs and lows of Hollywood, intertwined with the magic of Astaire's music and dance and the actress's personal milestones. In the classic film, the singer of Rose Smith's character in Meet Me in St. Louis remains a mystery. Different voices are heard in songs like Skip to My Lou and Meet Me in St. Louis, suggesting that she might not have sung for herself. This uncertainty is reinforced by the fact that her singing voice was replaced in other movies, despite what the liner notes claim. Before her acting career, she was part of the Radio City Rockettes. When she auditioned at MGM, she was asked to perform a scene from Bette Davis's movie Dark Victory. Interestingly, she looked remarkably like Davis during this audition. In summary, her role in Meet Me in St. Louis raises questions about her singing, given the multiple voices heard in the songs. Her background with the Radio City Rockettes and her resemblance to Bette Davis during the MGM audition provide insights into her varied experiences in the entertainment industry. Gave birth to her second child at age 33, a daughter named Karen Rodriguez on December 26, 1950. The child's father is her ex-husband, Louis Rodriguez. Lucio Bremer, known for her role as Rose Smith in Meet Me in St. Louis, wasn't groomed in the typical Hollywood fashion. She transitioned from being a raquette at Radio City Music Hall and a chorus girl on Broadway to the big screen without formal training. Despite this, she delivered commendable performances in high-profile films such as Ziegfeld Follies until the clouds rolled by. However, her career trajectory shifted abruptly after just a few films. Louis B. Mayer, head of MGM, believed in her potential, but Bremer's confidence in her abilities waned. She retired from acting in 1948, disillusioned with the industry. Lucille Bremer, known for her role as princess in Ziegfeld Follies, faced an unexpected challenge during filming. The bubbles for the finale created a filming fiasco when the gas they produced caused Vincent Minnelli's cameraman to faint on a 40-foot lift. While Minnelli struggled to prevent the fall, the bubbles overflowed, flooding the soundstage. Attempts to turn off the machine failed, leading to the fire brigade's intervention. Workers then used large rackets to control the bubbles, but the gas remained a hazard, prompting Manelli to open the soundstage doors between takes for the cast and crew to breathe. James Melton took precautions for his voice, using a wet handkerchief and Fred Astaire, and Lucio Bremer's dance had to be removed due to the bubbles obscuring their faces. Bremer and Fred Astaire teamed up in two films as dance partners. Born in Amsterdam, NY, she shared her hometown with Kirk Douglas, who was two months older. 